this is my Nexus DSC, and I want to show you how to use a serial connection between the Nexus DSC and Deep Sky Planner in the case that you can't use Wi-Fi or don't want to use Wi-Fi. So to start things up, we have to configure the Nexus with the proper settings so that we can connect Deep Sky Planner to the Nexus. So from the top level menu, we need to cursor over to the settings menu and click OK. And then we need to cursor over to the communications menu item and click OK. And we want to configure the serial port. So click that. Now, on this menu, you see the communication protocol. It's very important that you choose there LX200 because Deep Sky Planner will uh, issue its commands to Nexus in LX200 protocol. And then the other settings on this menu are very standard serial settings. You can see baud rate of 9600, uh, one, 8 data bits, 1 stop bit, and no pairing. This is very standard and you will not have to configure these on the Deep Sky Planner side with the exception of the baud rate. So we'll click OK to uh, cursor over to the OK button, and that's all there is to setting up the serial connection on Nexus. Now I need to configure Deep Sky Planner to work with the serial connection to Nexus. And the first thing I need to do is to click Equipment Observer and Digital Settings Circles. You can see controls here for all the digital setting circle devices that are supported in Deep Sky Planner. We need to choose Nexus and we need to connect using serial. Now, uh, you, you don't really know which COM port has been assigned by Windows to your serial connection. So in order to uh, determine that, I'm going to the Windows Device Manager. Just type that into the search box for Windows and you should get the Device Manager. And look for Ports. And I am using this Keyspan device to uh, enable my USB port on my computer. Uh, to connect to a serial DB9 connection. And you can see here that Windows has assigned COM port 5. So we need to close Device Manager and select COM port 5. Now when we uh, set up the serial communications configuration on the Nexus, we had 9600 bits per second uh, configured there, so we need to make sure that this matches. The other configuration settings for the serial communication connection are uh, defaulted in Deep Sky Planner, so there's no selection to be made there. So now that we have these settings established, we can click Test and make sure that the connection to Nexus DSC is correct. And, okay, Nexus has returned some reasonable information. We have a good connection. The last thing we need to do is enable Nexus DSC uh, to be our push to uh, device. So I need to click Enable Push To. If you have that checkbox checked for any of these other devices and you click OK, you'll get an error message because only one device can be enabled for push to uh, feature at, at any one time. So we're going to leave Enable Push 2 selected for Nexus and click OK to save.
once we have the communication connection settings configured, we need to put the Nexus DSC into the proper mode so that it is listening for push to commands from Deep Sky Planner. So in order to do that, we switch on the Nexus if it's not already on. And this is the top level menu. So this time we need to cursor to the Find menu. Click OK. And we need to cursor to From Planetarium. You have to select that mode with OK. Now the display of Nexus is showing you um, the larger numbers at the bottom of the screen indicate where the telescope is currently pointing. And I don't have any encoders attached at this point, so we have big question marks uh, about what object is there. Um, when you transmit a push to command to Nexus DSC, the coordinates shown in the upper right portion of the display uh, will change to the coordinates of your requested target. So right now that shows 0, 0, 0, um, RA, and the declination at 0 degrees. So you can watch that area to see uh, coordinates transmitted to Nexus DSC, and then you'll know exactly how to uh, push your telescope to zero in on the target. Now we want to actually use the Push To feature. So that is available from any of these reports that you can generate in Deep Sky Planner. They're available in the Deep Sky reports where you search a catalog, a reference catalog, star reports the same way, and observing plan reports. So I will go ahead and try that with the September Web Society uh, Galaxy of the Month plan. And what we can do is right click on an item and choose Push 2. Now you can see that there's a hotkey sequence you can use if you're out in the field and using the mouse isn't what you want to do. But I'm going to click that and you can hear the nexus. That particular item is below the horizon, so we got the alarm sound from nexus. But, as I look at the display, it has moved to that position.